representing Pinellas County. I'd like to call this meeting to order. I'd like to introduce the other PSA board members that are here today. There's the vice chair, Richard Bennett, representing the beach communities, Josh Schulman from St. Petersburg, Danny Saraki, North Pinellas Cities, and Keith Seville from Pinellas Park. Welcome everyone joining us on Zoom as well, if anyone's there. Uh, Clarissa, can you tell me if there are any members of the public in the lobby who wish to speak? There's no one in the lobby for public comment. Okay, or on, or on the phone, correct? Correct. We don't have correct. a phone? Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the action. The action, first action item is to approve the March 24th minutes. Do I have a motion? I'll move that the March 24th uh, minutes be approved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion passes. Now we'll, we'll go to the risk information system renewal with Diane Randall. Good morning. Good morning. Diane Randall, Director of Risk Management. I'm here this morning to have a action item to recommend approval of a three-year contract for the risk information system software maintenance with Risk Connect Incorporated for a total amount not to exceed $151,728. This system is the software system that we use to handle all of our claims for the agency and um, which includes workers comp general liability auto liability employment practices liability property cyber and pollution claims including management and compliance reports this contract will be effective may 17th 2021 and will remain in effect through may 16th 2024 the Annual amounts are shown in your handout for the action item, but the total cost for the three years is $151,728. I'll now hand it over to Al Burns for the procurement piece. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Al Burns, your highly motivated procurement director. Um, on, in April, we um, a sole source was issued in compliance with PSTA's procurement policy and also in compliance with um, the Florida statute. The sole source is posted on PSTA's website in accordance with the Florida statute for seven, for seven days. And on the 13th, we received no interest in um, no responses um, to conflict with the recommendation. The fiscal impact of this, this is funded by PSTA Information Technology Operating Budget and as Ms. Randall said, it is not to exceed $151,728 over the course of the next three years. The recommendation again is recommend approval of a three-year contract for risk information management system software maintenance with Risk Connect Incorporated for a total amount not to exceed $151,728. If there are any questions, Diane and I would be sure, happy to answer them. Okay, gentlemen, do we have any questions or discussion? Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve this software? I'll move that the risk information system software renewal be approved, not to exceed $151,728. I'll second, Mr. Chair. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, next we have the Autonomous Vehicle Operating Agreement with BEEP. And we'll have PSTA's Jacob Babuka start it off. Great, thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, Jacob Labutka, Senior Planner here at PSTA. Um, so today I'm, today I'm very excited to present this action item to you. 
Um, so today we are recommending approval of a one-year contract with BEEP um, with a one-year option uh, for the extent to the expansion of the AVA program uh, with uh, BEEP as the operator. So this comes at a not to exceed amount of $1,642,000. So to explain that a little bit, um, so we will be issuing um, an initial task work order of $400,000. Um, so this will just be to operate the upcoming demonstration, uh, AVA demonstration in Dunedin and Clearwater following the uh, very successful deployment that we just had in St. Petersburg. So the remaining value of about $1.2 million in the contract, what that allows us to do is it gives us the flexibility to potentially expand uh, the demonstrations in Dunedin and Clearwater or to perhaps go to another location in the future um, if we were to, say, find some additional grant dollars or if any local municipalities wanted to contribute funding. Having that wiggle room in the contract um, would allow us to expand the demonstration. And we would, of course, you know, if we were to expand and find some additional funding, um, we would come back, of course, to this committee and the board um, to bring that task work order for approval. So on that note, I'd like to pass it to our highly motivated procurement director, Al, um, to discuss the procurement. Thank you, Jacob. Um, in March, we released the RFP, and it was issued in compliance with PSTA's procurement policies. It was posted on PSTA's website. We did send out advance notice to, um, to about five qualified potential bidders or offerors to submit on this solicitation. However, on March 31st, we only received one proposal. However, uh, Mr. Chair, even though we received only one proposal, we still evaluated that proposal to make sure that it met all of the requirements that the project manager, Mr. Labuka, um, required. And we did that on April 5th. The pricing is, is considered to be fair and reasonable. And after a responsibility to check, it was determined they have the capacity to perform the work and therefore eligible for award. Even though we have an existing agreement with B, uh, we still made sure that they had the capacity and were eligible, meaning we checked SAMS.gov, Better Business Bureau, Florida, Florida website, to make sure that they that they meet all of the requirements for a federally funded project. <clears throat> I would like to give a special shout out to the contracting officer, um, <clears throat> Mr. David Yoder, as we're still um, going through this process. The fiscal impact PSTA has, um, I think Jacob went over the a portion of the fiscal impact, so sorry for the redundancy. PSTA has estimated the cost of the two demonstrations to be between 360 and 400,000. The demonstration will be, fun, will be funded by federal grants awarded to T. Barta with a 50% match from PSTA Capital Reserves as, as a match to the T. Barta funds. The demonstration project is budgeted within the adopted PSTA budget with the acceptance of the T. Barta funds. As Jacob explained, any service beyond the initial service proposal would be subject to future appropriation by the PSTA board. Once again, the recommendation is to recommend approval of a one-year contract with one one-year option for autonomous lease vehicle pilot program for a total amount not to exceed $1,642,000 to be incorporated with an initial task order, initial task work order not to exceed $400,000 and authorize the CEO to exercise the one-year option. Mr. Chair, I want to advise you that we are still in negotiations with BEEP Incorporated. I spoke to general counsel as recently as seven o'clock last night, and we're still reviewing, um, and we're still going over exceptions that BEEP has. However, we would not be bringing this action item to you if I wasn't 100% confident that we will have negotiations concluded and be successful and mutually agreed upon prior to the board meeting. If there are any questions, Jacob and I will be more than happy to answer them. I have a question, Mr. Burns. Yes, sir. Uh, you're saying that you haven't completely finished the negotiations. Uh, will the 1,642,000 Will that remain the same no matter what happens with your negotiations? 
Commissioner Bennett, that is a that is an excellent question. The items that are being negotiated have no impact on price, sir. That price will not deviate. So if we approve this today and it says not to exceed 1,642,000 over a three-year period, then that's what we'll have. Roger that. Yes, sir. Okay. Then I would make a motion to approve the contract. I'll second. Hey, gentlemen, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? None. The motion passes. Thank you all. Thank you, Jacob. And we'll move on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Um, pending the board approval of that contract uh, next week, um, you're all invited to go to see the Tampa Bay Rays play the Toronto Blue Jays in Dunedin and uh, ride Ava to the game. May, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, May 21, May 22, May 23. Thank you. That's when I'll start. You get to go to one or all three. <laughs> <laughs> is, it is it just we four? Or one, two, three, four, five. I'm sorry. I don't know. Ava does have a limited capacity. Right. right. It does have limited capacity, but uh, not quite the party bus. That that's the plan. Start. It'll start um, as a shuttle to um, that'll go down Douglas to the to the baseball field from um, uh, downtown Dunedin. Right. And uh, and then on. We're working to get a route approved on on game on non game days that will kind of circulate on Main Street there in the downtown of Dunedin. All right. Yeah. Sounds, I'm excited. That sounds good to me. All right. Next, we have our 10-year extension to the Jolly Trolley Agreement, and. Um, Brad, yeah, you got the. Show. It's me. I think, I think it might be me solo right now. Um, so this is an action item this morning, or a uh, for you to recommend a the ten year agreement, um, or the extension of the agreement we already have with the Jolly Trolley. And I'm very happy to uh, be here today with this action item because we had, as you recall, a really good discussion at our finance committee last month and then um, a, another good discussion with the full PSDA board last month and the principal items that were discussed or suggested by the PSDA board, which I'm very happy that they did, were to make sure that the Jolly Trolley doesn't get left behind as we move to electrify our fleet. Now that electric zero emission battery powered trolleys are available on the market. And so I'm, I'm pleased to present to you a contract that now incorporates a couple of provisions that I'll go over that now brings Jolly Trolley into the PSDA family even more with its uh, conversion, like we are, to an electrified fleet. So, next slide. And next slide. Okay, so yeah, so the recommendation for this morning is to approve a 10-year contract extension with the Jolly Trolley uh, for purposes of constructing the new trolley facility at a total 10-year cost subject to service levels, but not to exceed $41 million. Next slide. So just a reminder of our relationship with the Jolly Trolley. The Jolly Trolley has been operating um, in partnership with PSDA and before PSDA, the city of Clearwater, for nearly 40 years now. It's incredibly successful. It's one of the most popular services that PSTA offers. Jolly Trolley came to us. We are in year four of our current five-year agreement with them, and they want to build a new expanded facility, so they asked for a longer-term contract so they could get favorable financing from a bank to build that new facility. 
the longer term deal saves PSDA money versus going uh, year by year, and it saves, obviously saves, because it saves Jolly Trolley money. As I mentioned, the board uh, had a good discussion last month, and in my one-on-ones with most of the board members uh, so far, that is the only other additional questions I got were about the fuel savings, because we are making a change in that part of the agreement as well, where we will buy the fuel um, for Jolly Trolley and then have it, you know, save money on the economies of sale by buying in bulk and then deliver fuel to their facility just like they deliver here. Next slide. <clears throat> so again, their current facility is right in the Greenwood area there off of Alt 19. It's um, too small for their current fleet of trolleys, and then they're moving to Overbrook Road to that parcel on the left there, which is right next to a Clearwater fire station. It's a much bigger two and a half acre uh, parcel, and that's where they want to get bank financing so they can build a new facility. Uh, they have a design, they have an architect on are already, and uh, they're ready to, they're hoping to start construction this summer. Next slide. So the, th the three new clauses that we've in, uh, negotiated with the Jolly Trolley to ensure that they move forward with starting to electrify their trolley fleet are one, this new facility will be designed to accommodate electric trolleys and, and grow that fleet in the future. And to that end, I'm very thankful for the Jolly Trolley. They've, they've sent all the designs over to Henry Lukasik, our maintenance director. He's advised them on changes that need to be made to the uh, utility, uh, electric, and uh, uh, and other things, and so they are making those changes. <clears throat> Number two, for the first time, PSTA can buy, if we get a grant, or if the PSTA board decides to purchase electric zero emission vehicles, we can now give them to the Jolly Trolley, or lease them for one dollar, and then they operate the trolleys that we bought on their routes. That hasn't been in, that is not a provision in the current contract, but now we can do that over the next 10 years. If we are successful at getting grants, which I am very hopeful we will, <coughs> then we can purchase trolleys and have them operate them at zero emission. And then on the, and then finally, probably most importantly, Jolly Trolley has agreed to purchase of their replacement trolleys over the next 10 years, which they have planned to purchase 13 trolleys um, over the next 10 years to replace at least two of those with zero emission electric trolleys. And I'm very excited about that because that, that puts them essentially on the same pace or maybe even a little bit faster pace of going electric or going green uh, than PS, that PSDA is right now. Now, hopefully we will continue to get grants and be able to keep moving them forward just as we're moving forward with going with a electrified the zero emission uh, fleet. The trolley, and that's a picture of it right from the uh, manufacturer's website. The trolley is not technically available today or it's not running any, in any city right now but it is projected, it's getting its approvals from the federal government this summer and is projected to be uh, available for purchase this fall. That's okay with our timing because this contract will not actually begin until a year from now. We're bringing it to the board now because they wanna start building the garage, the, the new facility. But they, we will just finish our current five-year agreement that'll end September 30th, 2022, and then this contract will kick in October 1 of uh, 2022. <clears throat> when, and the trolleys will be available then. Next slide. What did you say? Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, on the fuel, as I said, we are now, we've changed the agreement so that PSDA will buy the fuel and we've zeroed out the fuel 
costs in the Jolly Trolley uh, contract. Now, PSDA is going to have some costs, but we are going to be able to save money. We're projected to, by zeroing out the Jolly Trolley fuel budget, that saves $220,000 a year. PSTA is projecting, and we use uh, Pinellas County as a forecast on fuel prices, um, at least out five years. PSTA is projecting to only spend about $170,000 a year on our diesel fuel purchases. So that is nearly a $500,000 <coughs> savings over the 10 years. Then in addition, the at least two electric trolleys that the Jolly Trolley will be getting, that's going to save PSDA money um, as well. And then that could, it could grow to more than two. But that will save $120,000 additional in fuel and maintenance costs during the, during the contract period by, by getting those electric trolleys in there. Next slide. So again, it's a 40... It's a 10-year agreement, $41 million not to exceed. Certainly hoping to um, come under that, that that has some cushion. You know, every year we provide extra trolley service for the uh, spring training for the uh, Toronto Blue Jays when they're normally just in uh, Dunedin for March. We run extra shuttles then. We run a lot of extra trolleys for spring break. Uh, on Clearwater Beach, and um, so I, th I think we'll be able to bring this um, bring this co cost down um, as year by year. Of course, it'll be subject annually to the levels of services the PSA board approves in its, in its budget. But you can kind of see it basically follows sort of the uh, same path that our current agreement has been following over the last year. Next slide. In, in your packet is the draft agreement um, the, and the rate table. Uh, but to summarize, on, the, on this slide, sort of the major changes. Instead of a two-year deal with option years, it's a 10-year deal. The, again, the instead of just having the Jolly Trolley buy diesel, diesel trolley buses, now, now they will buy at least two zero emission trolleys and, and they can buy more. And PSTA can, can also buy trolleys and, and lease them to them to, to operate. PSDA is now gonna buy the fuel. And again, PSDA is advising Jolly Trolley on the design of this new facility so that the um, that they can handle going to an electrified fleet. Next slide, final slide. So I, I think um, Vu says Rosemary uh, Windsor is with us this morning, as well as James Bradford, and Al Burns is there too, to answer any questions. Um, the recommendation again is a 10-year contract extension with the Jolly Trolley for purposes of constructing a new trolley facility at a total 10-year cost, subject to service levels, but not to exceed $41 million. Happy to answer any questions. Oh, and Bob, Bob Clifford is here. Hi, Bob. All righty. We have one second. Uh, Josh, you want to go ahead? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first question, um, do we know when will the electric... Uh, trolleys be purchased is when in this is there a schedule of uh, when that's going to happen right now i believe uh and rosemary can confirm this that they are assuming that the their two trolleys will be purchased in years two and years eight is that correct rosemary? no it's it's four and eight and i think brad you and four i the discussion eight. we had is about um not being leading edge for these coming out um yes. for first generation so um, included in the budget for us is year four and year eight. Okay, okay. So, how does the how does the purchase of those vehicles affect the amortization schedule that we had? <clears throat> and it's not in the packet, uh, in the current packet. So I'm going off of memory. From 
the, the purchases. Um, are, are we forecasting the, the future cost of those and then spreading that out over the whole 10 years? I think I'll let yes. uh, Rosemary kind of provide uh, more of the details on her latest schedule for all of her trolleys. And I, I don't know if the electric vehicles are, have a different amortization schedule, but it's my understanding that all vehicles purchased under this contract, Rosemary, correct me, are, are amortized or are paid off within the 10 year period of time. Is that right? That is correct. That is correct. Uh, we start out year one, we purchase one vehicle. Um, it's a 60 month amortization and all of them are paid off by the end of year 10. And, and just to reiterate, um, we're bringing in, um, well, it, this will include 13 vehicles um, because we'll be bringing in two 2020s with us into the contract that will not be charged under this contract. So, so you said they're, they're under a 60 month amortization for each vehicle, is that what you said? That is correct. So the year eight electric vehicle purchase, um, does that, do we start amortizing that before year eight? Um, no, unfortunately it's back end loaded. So when we get to year 10, um, it will exceed or go into the 60 months. Okay, so the initial amortization schedule, so it's not evenly spread out throughout the entire 10 years. So we're not in essence paying for year eight's electric vehicle in year one. That is correct. Not until we make the purchases. And then um, the last two vehicles will be purchased in year seven. There will be one purchase in year eight. Those will be depreciated by the end of year 10. All the others are depreciated during the year we, we purchase them for the next five years. Okay. So you're not paying up front for all of them. Okay, thank you for the Commissioner, Com yeah. Commissioner Shulman, just like Rosemary said, um, and I wanna thank um, Rosemary and Mr. Clifford. We've been working diligently with the finance task force. And the bottom line is we're not gonna be paying for anything in advance. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and like I said, the schedule wasn't here to look at, so I was uh, just going off of memory and there were some changes. So um, the other question is, um, you know, around the, the, first off, Brad, you mentioned that there's $120,000 in fuel and maintenance costs. Do we, are we paying for maintenance in, in this contract? Do we cover maintenance on those trolleys? We do, yes. I mean, we, we basically pay 100% of the expense related to operating and maintaining of the trolleys that they run on PSVA's routes. Okay, so, and I was, un I was unaware of that. So even the current jolly trolleys, we pay for maintenance and yes. maintain those vehicles currently. Yes. Okay. Um, it, yeah, so I, I had another, so one, one of the concerns or questions I had was um, regarding the fact that uh, the, the, the second electric vehicles purchased in year eight, which forestalls our savings um, on the fuel that we're paying for, for eight years, right? So we're, we're, we're gonna be paying for fuel on other trolleys um, and waiting till almost the end of the contract um, before we then get, get to a fuel savings. Uh, and I, I understand the, the desire not to be cutting edge um, but I also want to make sure that we're, as an organization, receiving the, the savings on those fuel costs as quickly as possible. Right. And for the life of the vehicle, right? So if it's a, you know, I don't, I don't know how long the, the batteries last on those vehicles, but if it's another 10 years, let's say we're only in this current contract, we're only getting two years worth of those fuel saving costs uh, on that last vehicle um, in, under the current contract. So is, is there a way to... You know, is there a reason why it's waiting till year eight, and not you know year four, and then maybe year six? You know, something that could give PSTA a little bit more operational savings cost on that second electric trolley. I think that's a very good question. I I think I agree with you. I am not such a fan of. I, it's something I hope to talk with Jolly Trolley a little <clears throat> bit now, between now and next week, on this. On, on the uh, amortization of the vehicle purchase schedule because it, it doesn't necessarily benefit PSTA um, to have a, a very large increase in year 10 as, as they pay up all the trolleys if we or the, the board in 10 years knows that it's going to keep going with the trolleys and keep 
running it, then maybe 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 we want to be able to purchase the uh, electric vehicles um, sooner, you know, and keep and keep going, and, you know. So hopefully we can kind of get a little either ha create some flexibility in that vehicle purchase schedule, and then. Um, also have some discussions about exactly how it's being built now, uh, but then keep some flexibility. If if the uh, if the first electric trolley works great, then I don't know. I don't know. There, I don't think you know. PSA is paying paying for it, so it seems like we should we should be able to go to the second trolley sooner. Um, so then the next question would be if. Um, if we were to find funding and purchase a, an electric trolley ourselves, you said lease back for a dollar, I'm guessing that would then, you know, reduce the amortization schedule because we purchased the, the vehicle. So we're, yes. their contract's not amortized. We're not paying for that through the contract anymore. Right. So we, we will take it, we will get a discount um, from, on our rate, equivalent to the diesel trolley that we, re in, their, in their replacement schedule, that we're re that we're replacing. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, you know, just and this isn't a question; this is a general comment. I, I am very much in favor of moving forward with the Jolly Trolley contract. I think the ten years makes sense to allow them to move forward on their project. And I'm also very appreciative of PSTA and Jolly Trolley um, taking into account the. Um, concerns and comments from the board at the last meeting regarding electrification and I feel that this by keeping Jolly Trolley on pace with our own electrification efforts it is a it's a true partnership in that regard um, it's not punitive to Jolly Trolley and making them do more than we're willing to do uh, but it's making sure that as a organization we're all moving in the same way at the same pace so uh, for me that is a, a tremendous effort so I thank PSTA and Jolly Trolley for working on that thank you Mr. Chair Thank you, Josh. Do we have any more uh, questions? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question uh, kind of what Josh brought up about the maintenance. I'm assuming the, the maintenance on the Jolly Trolleys will be performed in uh, the new facility that's being built. And how are we going to monitor that if we're paying for it? Well, that's a are the hourly employees that perform the maintenance going to be PSTA employees? No, uh, they, they are Jolly Trolley employees. So we're uh, going to pay their salaries? PSTA pays a per hour rate of all the costs yeah. that it costs Jolly Trolley to run the trolley routes that we tell them that we want them to run. And that includes the maintenance costs. That includes the staff that works for Rosemary that... Uh, the hourly maintenance expenses, the parts and everything related to that. It's a good question though that you have about uh, how do we monitor that. For a long time it hasn't really mattered because they, it, it, they are their trolleys. They're their vehicles. Uh, of course we care because we don't want the trolleys breaking down and they do have, and, and uh, uh, Jolly Trolley has done a fantastic job of maintaining its fleet very, very efficiently and effectively to keep the trolleys running on the, on the routes. In the event that PSTA were to purchase, especially with federal funds, uh, or get a grant and, and buy a, an electric trolley and, and give it to them to run, then, then we are on the hook. There are specific requirements that the federal government puts on us to keep our trolley, keep our buses and trolleys um, operating in a, in a state of good repair and in good condition, and the feds come down here and they audit us, so that would that would require us to keep sa same kind of thing. That's already built into our contract that they 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 have to be able to um, demonstrate that they can perform the maintenance according to the manufacturer standards, etc. So it's all built in there. But it's a really, yeah, I, it's a I'm really important I'm less concerned point. about the maintenance getting performed as I am about the transfer of the funds from our checking account to theirs. If they are going to work on a bus and they're telling us that the maintenance cost was $25,000, 
and then we're going to write them a check for $25,000. How are we going to verify that? Okay, well, uh, luckily, it's, it's, that's a problem for Rosemary and Bob to worry about and not, not PSTA because we pay them a, basically a flat fee or a, 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 a contract rate for all the costs for the month of April 2021. They send us a bill for that. It's in the contract. And then all the maintenance and, and all of the other, and the driver expenses, everything. If they, if they have an engine go and they have a major uh, expense, they've built that into, they've built assumptions into their budget, but it's on them to maintain the vehicles to keep them in working order within their budget. That's the same thing with our paratransit agreements and it's kind of the same thing. The risk is on them for some kind of major problem with one of the vehicles. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a comment that I would like to say that at the board meeting we talked about moving to electric vehicles, electric trolleys, and I think that this new plan, I fully support this, and I am look, for, look forward to working with the Jolly Trolley, and most of all, seeing the building be constructed. I think this is a great move forward for PSTA and Jolly Trolley for electric trolleys, and uh, I support this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right, I have one question, and I believe it would go to James Bradford. And uh, in the first part of our packet, there was a mention of converting diesel trolleys to zero emission. If that if that's possible, um, the trolleys we have on the lot now would they be a candidate for that? Yes. Uh, I can take that question. You want to take that, Henry? Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, hi, Henry. Um, Commissioner Cox, uh, could you clarify which trolleys you're referring to? Yeah, sure. Um, let me go back there. Okay, in our packet in the. Uh, under 3D, the first item, um, the Jolly Trolley Agreement, if you go down to zero, down to one, two, three, four, five, six bullet points, and it says, following the PSDA's board request that this new agreement ensure trolleys like PSD's own fleet move forward with emission reduction strategies such as replacing diesel or gasoline trolleys with battery uh, powered zero emission trolleys, just as PA, PSDA is doing. I think it's on the second page of this, let me look. Yeah, <clears throat> under B, second page of this, it says if PSDA can secure grant or funding to purchase electric trolleys or convert <clears throat> diesel trolley replacements to zero emission options, Jolly <clears throat> trolley will agree to operate these PSDA funded vehicles subject to fleet size limitations. Do you see that, Henry? Yeah, I. Henry, let me answer the first part, and then and then you follow up. So, um, I, I I strongly believe that the next trolleys that PSTA buys for its own operations uh, will likely be electric. Now that now that electric trolleys have been now on, are on the market. Now, as far as converting any, I know Commissioner Schulman asked me that question too. Um, Henry, can you give an opinion about the ability to convert vehicles once they're, you know, delivered to electric? Uh, so it is possible. I know there are a couple of bus manufacturers out there that specialize in retrofitting uh, combustion vehicle engines to all electric. Um, the decision about doing that to a newly purchased vehicle might need to be weighed at that time, but certainly taking older older vehicles in a fleet uh, that their engines and transmissions have met their useful life could get a second lease on life as a converted all electric vehicle. Yeah. All right, thanks. That's all I have. Now, go ahead, Josh. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I also I just wanted to clarify. Uh, not only uh, my point to, to Brad was about converting, um, you know, diesel to electric, but was also potentially changing our purchases, uh, our current contract of purchasing new trolleys that were diesel to us purchasing new trolleys that were electric. And if there's any wiggle room, since the second batch of ten trolleys hadn't been delivered yet. Um, from our contract purchase in October of 2019, so we had 20. So that was that was part of our our, our internal discussion was you know should we could we change our contract to match what we're asking others to do, as opposed to also just changing the, the actual physical diesel vehicle to an electric vehicle. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. Um, but with that, I would make a motion to approve um, as recommended. Thank you. Okay. All right, gentlemen, <clears throat> gentlemen, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, our partners from Jolly Trolley, for being here as well. And next, we'll move on through the month or to the monthly financial report. And Julie Lupus will walk us through that for the February 21, 2021 financials. Julie? Good morning, everyone. I'm Julie Lupus, Director of Accounting. Um, in February, we finished 269,000 unfavorable to budget, still driven by property tax and the timing of the distributions. If you recall from last month, we had a discussion about how we have little control over the timing of the property tax receipts, which causes variations of the budget from month to month. Each year, the property tax does come in very close to the appraiser's estimates, so we're getting closer to smoothing out these variances as the months progress. It's already February now and into March. We all continue to work very hard on keeping expenses in line as they're, as they're coming in at 6.9% favorable to budget. For February year to date, we finished 3.2 million favorable to budget, assisted by the continued control of expenses by staff with our largest savings coming from our reduced service hours. That's pretty much high level. Does anyone have any questions on the financial statements? Go ahead, Josh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a quick question again, and, and I know we've talked about the timing, and I know Debbie had mentioned that you were, you, everyone there was thinking of uh, trying to account for the, uh, the, the timing of tax revenues in a different way. Yeah, have, have we looked at an accrual accounting for, um, the tax receipts, since they wind up coming in close every year, just so it's, it, it's from, from a review of the budget standpoint, it, it would be mm -hmm. more clear, and we can't be the only agency dealing with this. I did talk to our auditors about it, and I mean, there's different methodologies for doing it. Ours is considered totally appropriate by them since this is unknown. Um, so we did have a, a full conversation with the folks at Cherry Beckert about it and they are, they are behind how we're doing it and don't really have a viable alternative considering that, I, I mean, we're talking about one day really being the difference in what could be spot on with budget or what could be off a tremendous amount if something was to come in on the 31st or the 1st. So uh, there really is just so much variation within one day. Um, I'm kind of in favor of how we're doing it now and the auditors do agree with that. Debbie, did you have any additional comment? No, we also look back at the history of what PSTA has done. And at one point, long before I was here, uh, they had accrued for the property tax revenue and then the auditors had them change to what we're doing today. So this seems to be consistent across audit firms as to how we're handling it as well. Okay, I, I appreciate so, that. You know, I, I realize that obviously we want to uh, make sure that we're doing what is uh, proper. Uh, but from a, 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 as you're aware, from a budgeting and understanding from a month to month um, standpoint, it becomes, you know, we, we, it's hills and valleys as opposed to yes. being a nice smooth ride. And it'd be easier to identify other issues in the financial statements if it was 
if, if those anomalies were removed. So of course the second question becomes, you know, can, can, has there been any discussion with the property, uh, the tax collector's office about, you know, moving payments to mid-month or mid-cycle so, so that they're not occurring on the 1st or 31st? Oh, that's an excellent idea. We can certainly reach out to the property appraiser's office to see if that's something they're willing to do. Right. They do come varied at this point. So they're not always on the first or the last day. I was also using that as an example um, of, of where a variation can come in. But I, I'm going back through the notifications I get just really quickly in my head. And they are sporadic um, throughout the course of the month. And we do account for them when they come in. So when they hit the bank. Okay, well, I, and I allow for your, your best judgment on that. I just, uh, we, the, the effort here is to, uh, yeah, every finance committee meeting is, uh, we receive more than expected because of timing. We receive less than expected because of timing. And yes, the year-to-date numbers are looking as they should and kind of give us a sense as to where things are, but um, yeah, any efforts on those fronts uh, uh, are appreciated. Thank you. No, definitely a good idea. Thank you. All right, thank you, Julie. And Thank you, Debbie. And we'll move on to Brad for ridership and performance. Do you have anything you'd like to highlight, Brad? Uh, well, first, quickly on the uh, on the finance situation. I right now, hopefully, everybody has their seatbelt on. We're just bracing to get the uh, state legislative session over <laughs> without too much um, collateral damage. I think uh, Commissioner Siraki was up there. Yes. Hopefully uh, that went well. Great. What we're kind of monitoring most specifically as they every day are talking about the budget uh, are two things that will affect PSK budget possibly substantially. One is the a potential reduction in our transportation disadvantaged uh, revenue that, that, that funds our transportation disadvantage program. I don't think it doesn't seem like that will affect um, us this coming year, uh, but maybe down the down the road. And then two is you probably saw you might have seen uh, the the article. The T Barda funding has been now approved in both the House and the Senate, and um, that depending on where they take the money from to fund T Barda. That, that could come out of, that might be required to come out of um, other transportation funding in our region, a la existing PSTA and HART grants. So it might be just taking money away from PSTA and HART to give to T-BARDA. That's happened in the past. Our lobbyist, Ron Pierce, is working very hard to make sure that doesn't happen. That's not what T-BARDA wants to happen. Nobody wants that to happen. Um, so we're just remaining to see. I know there's many other things that probably all of you are monitoring as well to see what happens, but hopefully we'll get to the end of next Friday and uh, be okay. Um, as far as the uh, ridership uh, report, which is a paper copy in front of you and in your packet, or maybe it's just not me. No, I, I think you have it. Um, when I look at this, it looks like every single uh, statistic went in the right direction. And I don't know about you, but when I see something that looks too awesome, I question if it is maybe incorrectly calculated. <laughs> so I gotta go check uh, to make sure that um, this is true. But um, of course, ridership this March is up about 9% from last month. Half, half of last month, last year's March was normal and spring break level, and then the other half was went off a cliff uh, due to the pandemic. So it's very uh, variable right now. But ridership is growing um, as we get out of the pandemic um, fairly quickly here, especially on our access paratransit. That, that really took was a huge growth in the month of March. And um, so we're, we're putting some measures in place to kind of make sure that doesn't get out of control as we change contractors. 
Um, and then you can see down below, our complaints were down, our on-time performance was up, our accidents were down, our security incidents are way down. So, and even our miles between, our miles per road call are, are just going in the wrong direction. It's a little bit down, but a pretty good month otherwise. Hey, Brad. Um, I think that's it. Yep. So, committee members, any other business to bring to this committee? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and it doesn't directly involve this committee, but since Brad brought up the, uh, the legislature's activities, um, I just wanted to share that I'm, I'm disappointed that the um, the, the bill to uh, change the yellow flashing beacons and, at crosswalks is moving forward. Is it? Um, oh. It's on the House calendar now um, for, for approval. Um, and I think that directly impacts our riders and their ability to, mm -hmm. um, to, to safely cross the streets and, and get, to the, get to buses. So um, I know I realize at this stage of the game, there's not a lot that can be done, um, but it is disappointing uh. that that's moving forward in its, in its current state. And I agree with you, Josh. Thank you. I, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want a couple comments, Brad. Uh, my my trip in Tallahassee was 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 fantastic. I got to meet with the House representatives via Zoom. We were not allowed in the Senate, but we were allowed in the House. So I got to meet with all the House representatives. And Brad, I wanted to just tell you as we talked about on our monthly call, I did thank each and every one of them for their letters for the PSTA, for the financial support from the, for the federal government. So that I took care of that. But I want to, Josh, I want to just tell you, when I met with the, the Senate, they basically said they're going to vote no on that crosswalk. So I just wanted to give you an update. I think uh, being up there, talking to the House and the Senate, it sounds like it might pass the House, but I don't think it's going to pass the Senate, to be honest with you. Then I'm all in favor of that scenario. Yeah, and I, and I mean, I've talked to quite a few Senate reps about it, and they—it's not. I don't think it's going to pass. So just so you're aware of that. Uh, other than that, it was a very successful trip. The the bad part about the trip, the worst part about it, was there were no cars on the road. Most of the restaurants were closed. Mm -hmm. The restaurants that were open weren't very busy. The hotel we stayed at the Double Tree. It wasn't very busy at all. And when we walked through the Capitol, there was like nobody in there. Oh. So security was pretty easy to get through. Uh, no problems there. Uh, in order to get into the house, the legislative aid had to come down and let you in after you went through security. But other than that, it was a very successful trip. Uh, and I went there for the Suncoast League of Cities. Jamie Robinson, another board member, and I both went. And it was a, it was a great three days in Tallahassee. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dan. And if we have no more business to discuss, we'll adjourn. I was very quiet. Good. Good meeting, Mr. Chair. Thank you all. Good meeting. And okay, thank you. You want a little time? <laughs> I didn't go have breakfast. <laughs> Dan, thank you for that. I did not know the uh, Senate was uh, no, they're dragging their feet on that. Because out of committee, it was still 8-3 yes on, on the Senate. So it's, I, it's, I was uh, anticipating more support. On and the, uh, Randy Fine, we were in the Governor's Club, and Randy Fine was there. And a couple people from the, sun, the 